Today, what we're going to work on is function composition. So um, learning target just says I can compose functions. And we're going to see some different types of notation today. And I'm going to write out what this notation means. Most of the time, um, you will see like this with parentheses. The way you read this is f of g of x. And it's composition. It's not multiplication. Um, the other format you can see this in, sometimes it's called fog. Um, this, it's just like a little tiny open circle. So it's not multiplication. That circle is open. That's an indication of composition. Um, personally, I prefer the notation over here um, with the parentheses, but I want to get you guys used to both, so we're going to use both today. Um, what's going to go on here? Again, this is not multiplication. It's basically plugging one function into the other. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys how this works in the first example. And for this example, we're just going to use numbers to plug in. So just like yesterday when we were doing the operations, if you plug numbers in, your answer is going to be a number. If we have variables here, like where I have the 6 or negative 7 or the 8, um, if you have variables, then our answer is going to have an expression. Okay, so I have two different functions here. We have f of x is 5x plus 4, and probably should grab a different color, but I don't have one. g of x is x minus 3, so we're going to make sure we're using the correct functions. This would be read f of g of 6. If you like this notation, what happens is the one closest goes first. So I'm going to plug 6 into the g of x function. Now, let me write it with the other notation. This would be f of g of 6. Basically, each one of these turns into two problems in one. First thing I would do, let me grab a different color. I would find g of 6. So pick the correct function. That would be 6 minus 3, which is 3. And then what you do is you take g of 6 and substitute that in for g of 6. So to get the final answer to the question, f of g of 6, if g of 6 is equal to 3, then I do f of 3. Remember, this is not multiplication, it's just notation that says I'm going to plug 3 into the f of x function everywhere I see an x. And so for that, I would do 5 times 3 plus 4. Final answer is going to be the 19. Okay. If you like this notation, whichever is closer to the number, that goes first. So I would first plug negative 7 into the f of x function. And then the result I would plug into the g of x function if we're doing composition. If you like the other notation a little bit better, g of f of negative 7. So we would start and we would do f with negative 7 plugged in everywhere we see an x. So 5 times negative 7 plus 4. That would be negative 35 plus 4, which is negative 31. You then take that value and substitute it in for the f of negative 7. So to get your final answer, I would do g of negative 31, which is just going to be negative 31 minus 3. So final answer is going to be negative 34. The last problem, you can actually compose a function with itself, which is what's going on here. This would be f of f of 8. So I'm basically just going to plug these numbers into the same function. If I figure out f of 8, that's going to be 5 times 8 plus 4. 40 plus 4 is going to be 44. Then you're going to sub 44. We're just going to use exactly the same function. We do f with a 44 plugged in. And so 5 times 44 plus 4, and I'm just going to grab my calculator real quick because I don't know what that is off the top of my head, and we should get 224 as our final answer. Okay, let me slide this up. I'm just going to switch up the functions that we're using, so make sure you pay attention to the directions. Otherwise, this works the same. G composed with f of 10 or g of f of 10, or if you like this notation, Whatever's closer goes first. 
So I'm going to plug 10 into the f of x function. So f of 10, we got an absolute value here. So 3 times 10 in the absolute value plus 2. This is positive 30, and the absolute value is not going to change that. So this will be 30 plus 2, which is 32. Okay, once you have f of 10, you're going to sub that in. And for the final answer, I need g of that value, which is 32. Switch up here, your g function is the square root of x, which for our problem is going to be 32, plus 4. So I get square root of 36. Now, the square root already exists in this problem, so do not introduce a plus or minus symbol. We're not introducing the square root. It's already part of the function, so just a plain 6 is going to be your answer. Um, whatever's closer goes first, so the 77 I would plug into the g function first, or if you like the other notation, still the same thing, um, g of f of 77. So first we're going to start out with g with a 77 plugged in. So into the g function, 77 plus 4. Again, this is a square root, but I did not introduce the square root into the problem. It was already there, so don't put the plus and minus. This is just going to be a positive 9 here. Whoops, I shouldn't have boxed that in. Forgive me. We're going to plug that to get our final answer, f of 9. So into the absolute value, 3 times 9 plus 2, 27 plus 2, 29. My actual answer to the question is going to be the 29. This is our answer. And again, you can compose a function with itself. This is g of g of 3596. So g of g, 3596. So we're going to plug that in to the g of x function. So 3596 plus 4. It's going to give you 3600. And again, don't Put the plus and minus. You did not introduce that square root into the problem, so you just do the positive. And we're going to end up with the square root of 3,600, which is just going to give you 60. And then these are always two problems in one, so then I would plug this guy back in to get our final answer, g of 60. We're going to do 60 plus 4, square root of 64. Again, don't put the plus and minus, and we're going to... Let me slide that up, end up with 8. Okay, and I have another question down here at the bottom. This is a composition, but it's a triple composition. So same concept, we're just going to work from the inside out. So first thing I'm going to do is the h of 2. So just pick your function out. That's going to be 2 squared plus 1, which is going to give us 5. Okay, then once I get this, this is 5. Then I would plug it into the g function. So g of 5, switch up functions, 3 times 5, which is going to be 15. And then finally, the f is on the outside. Um, so I'm going to plug in 15 to the f of x function. Oops, 15. So we have 2 times 15 minus 1. 2 times 15 is 30, minus 1 would be 29. And that is our ultimate answer to the question. Now, as we flip to the back here, let me slide that up so you can see it better. Um, what we're going to do on the back is going to have variables instead of numbers like we had on the front. So this is f composed with g of x or f of g of x. Okay, if you have variables, you're going to have variables in your answer. Okay, now here's how this works. This is the g of x function, the x minus 3 you are going to substitute that in to the f of x function wherever you see an x. So g of x is equal to x minus 3. So I am really going to do f of x minus 3. Remember, this is just notation. Everywhere you see an x here, you're going to replace it with the expression x minus 3. If you have a couple terms, make sure you put that in parentheses. So I am substituting this in place of this x, and then all you have to do to answer the question is do any simplifying that you can. So this would be 5x minus 15 plus 4, which would totally simplify to be 5x minus 11, and that expression would be your answer. 
Now next to this, it's flipped over. This is g of f of x, so or g composed with f of x. So here, it's backwards. I am taking the f of x function, and I am going to put that in place of x in the g of x function. So you would write it like g of 5x plus 4. So into my g function, everywhere I see an x, which you could put parentheses if you wanted to, um, but you don't really need to here because I don't have anything in front of the x. There's not going to be any distributive property, but I'm just kind of doing this here so you can see what I'm doing. And really all I can do here, I can go ahead and drop those parentheses and I can combine the 4 with the negative 3. And that would be my answer, 5x plus 1, totally simplified. Now, these questions down here, if you're involving a quadratic or something like that, can be a little more complicated. So for the third question here, here's my f of x, here's my g of x. We are working on f composed with g of x, or f of g of x. So I am going to take the g of x function, and everywhere I see an x in the f of x function, I'm going to plug that in. So if I do that, it'd be 3. Instead of x, you write this whole function, x squared plus 2x minus 8. And then don't forget, a lot of times if it's got other terms, people will kind of forget. I just need that minus 1. And then we're just going to do any simplifying we can, which is going to result just a little distributive property here. I'm going to get 3x squared plus 6x minus 24, and then minus 1. And then the only other thing we can do there is combine that negative 24 and negative 1 to be negative 25. So f composed with g of x or f of g of x here is going to be 3x squared plus 6x minus 25. Now this one flipped over g composed with f of x or g of f of x means we're going to take the f of x function, the 3x minus 1, and plug it into the g function everywhere I see an x. Now this one becomes trickier because there's two different places we're going to have to plug that in. So if I do that here for the x squared, instead of x squared, I plug in the 3x minus 1, and then that whole expression will be squared. Then I have plus 2x in place of the x. I rewrite again that 3x minus 1 and then the minus 8. This is probably the hardest problem you would run into in this whole unit in terms of the amount of algebra you do. Do not distribute that exponent. That means you're going to have to square, which means I'm going to multiply that by itself, which means if I try to distribute my exponent, it's going to be wrong. Okay, make sure you write this as 3x minus 1 times itself. Don't distribute. And then I'm just going to simplify this just a teeny tiny bit as I go. You can go ahead and just distribute that. That'd be 6x minus 2 minus 8. I'm going to do a little foil. Draw yourself a box if you prefer that. This is going to become 9x squared minus 3x minus another 3x. Negative 1 times negative 1 turns into positive 1. And then I have this plus 6x minus 2 minus 8. And you can combine anything in previous steps if you want to. I'm just going to do it all at once here. I only have one term with an x squared. That's going to be the 9x squared. Okay, we have negative 3, negative 3, and positive 6. This is not normal, but this actually cancels all that out. So I don't have a term with an x for this problem. So negative 3, negative 3, and this positive 6 cancel each other out. Plain numbers, we have 1 minus 2 minus 8. So all that combined should give you negative 9. Don't factor. I know you might be tempted. I do have a greatest common factor, but we're just simplifying this. So go ahead and leave that as 9x squared minus 9. Okay, and then I just have one more set with variables here at the bottom. And here, f of x, x squared plus 9. g of x is x minus 9 under a square root. So my first question, g composed, I'm sorry, f composed with g of x. This is f of g of x, if you like that notation better. So I am going to take the g of x function, and I am going to plug it in everywhere I see an x in the f of x function. Okay, so instead of x squared, I write 
x minus 9 under our square root, that squared plus 9. Okay, now this is kind of a weird situation, but because of this being under a square root and then this being squared, the square root and squared actually cancel each other out here. So that first term just simplifies to be x minus 9, and then we have a plus 9. And then if you can simplify further, which we can, those 9s cancel each other out. So my answer here is just actually x. Okay, and then we're going to reverse that. So for this one, g composed with f of x or g of f of x, which means we're going to take the f of x function here, and everywhere I see an x in the g of x function, we're going to plug it in. All right, so for this one, instead of under my square root x minus 9, in place of the x, we are going to put x squared plus 9 minus 9. Now, as you do this, um, the square root symbol acts as parentheses. So I need to completely simplify this as much as possible before I take the square root. I don't have anything in front of those parentheses to distribute or anything like that. So you can actually just drop the parentheses if you'd like. And what that allows us to do, we can combine the positive 9 and the negative 9. So those will cancel each other out. And we will end up with the square root of x squared, which we know how to simplify from our radicals unit. That is just going to be x. And you'll notice both of these simplified to be the same, but obviously the algebra was different. And we're going to talk more about this particular concept in our next unit. But both of the answers here for the last two questions are x.